talk a little bit about website traffic sales. Oftentimes, if, if this is your first time joining us, uh, the purpose of these calls is to help us find shortcuts to acquiring new customers, something that seems to be increasingly more difficult. But hopefully some of the um, discussions that we have here will make it a little bit easier for you. One of the areas that we really need to focus on, especially in the B2B space, is working with website visitors for sales. There's a lot of different places for low-hanging fruit when it comes to acquiring customers, but website traffic is probably at the top of the list. But because 98% of the visitors that hit your site never actually reach out to you, a lot of that low-hanging fruit can go bad pretty quickly. So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to take advantage of those opportunities and not miss out. Really, when it comes to priorities in terms of time, uh, website traffic should be at the top of the list because when, uh, consider it an inbound call, but slightly less warm. But to understand how to manage this, first we need to understand a little bit about website analytics. There's two different types of website analytics services. One identifies the what, and the other one identifies the who. The majority of the companies that you're working with for website analytics, like Google Analytics, will talk about the what. What kind of pages are they going to? Where do they come from? How many visitors? High-level details. It's great for you to optimize your website, figure out how much time they're spending on different pages, where to spend more time, but that's not really going to help you much for that 98% of those visitors who don't tell you who they are. So because we work in the B2B space, it's much easier for us to identify who's on our site based off of their IP address. Now think of this kind of like if you're in your LinkedIn profile, you would see a section that shows you who's viewed your LinkedIn profile. This is similar to watching who's on your website, but instead of looking at people visiting your LinkedIn profile, we're going to look at people who are visiting your site, all based off of their IP address. Now, not all companies are identifiable via their IP address, but many of them are. And so what we've done is we've put together within the Ensable portal, if you click on website traffic in the top left-hand corner, and that's portal.ensable.com, if you have a website plugin from Ensable, you'll start to see all of the companies that are hitting your site. And that will show up here on the bottom, bottom section of the page. Here at the top of the page, there's a few URL um, integrations that you can add. Basically, what this is, is an, it's an invisible image tag that you can add to any page on your site. You can add it to your footer, your headers, or you can add it to each individual page or whatever pages you'd like to do. But once you add this tag to your site, um, it's already ready for you with, with your ID and an example home page. You can, where it says home page, you can replace that with the actual URL or like a reference, so that way you can kind of know what page that they're visiting. These, these data points likewise will flow into your opportunities report. So if you get your opportunities report, which updates you about changes taking, taking place across any company that you're following or tracking, in addition to tracking companies for moved ads and changes, this is also going to show you any company that's hitting your site. So you'll see that here. On the far right-hand side, there's two reports that you can pull, which is really important for taking advantage of these 98% of the companies that are hitting your site that don't tell you who they are. But you can either click on the background check report, which will build an upsell report for you. will give you a full background check on the company, including contacts. Or you can just go to the LinkedIn integration and go directly to uh, contacts on LinkedIn. This is a quick preview of what it would look like in the upsell report if you were to pull that. Now, once you see somebody hitting your site, there's a few steps that we want to take next, all right? So you see, you'll, you'll, let's say you see somebody on your site. You can watch it in real time on, on the Ensable page, or you can just follow up with them each morning with your opportunities report. The first step you take is you connect with the, the main contacts at the company on LinkedIn. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do I know who to reach out to? We don't necessarily know the exact individual because we're, we want to make sure that we keep those privacy levels pretty high when it comes to people. But there's a few ways that we can figure that out. Now, chances are you've interacted with them recently on via email, and that's why they're on your site. And so if you do a quick search within your, within your email service, you'll be able to find any emails to that domain to see if you've talked to anybody at that company recently. And then you simply reply to those emails. But in general, you'll be connecting with individuals on LinkedIn, the type of people that would likely be visiting your site, it's also a good idea, and this is something we talked about in the past, you get a much better response rate if you 
email one individual and copy two others. Now, a lot of you may be wondering, well, do I talk to them about the fact that they were on our site? Usually it's not recommended because it makes it, it kind of reaches that creepy level of monitoring and it doesn't have a, as good of a response rate. And so when you are following up, rather than say, I noticed you were on our site and I'm following you and tracking you and do, tracking everything that you do, it's better just to kind of create a generic outbound type of approach. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll highlight a few of these. Some of the better strategies for generic outbound um, campaigns. Um, a few weeks ago, we talked about tax credits, petitions, uh, the customer customer sales strategy, opinion sales, survey sales, experimental sales, job sales, uh, connecting with them on LinkedIn, Office 365 audits, volunteerism strategies, or simply asking them to join your lead exchange. So there's there's a lot of other uh, strategies. I usually recommend going through a few of them and choosing the one that you feel most comfortable with, the one that works best for you. So you can find that on our YouTube channel. But definitely take a look and think about how you would want to execute that. So essentially, when you see people on your site, you want to always connect with the individuals on the, on, at the company level on LinkedIn. It's usually a best, the best way to, to reach out from a cold level rather than emailing them unless you've already emailed them via LinkedIn. But if you do have some email strings open, which hopefully you've established a few connections within the company, use go back to those email strings and reply to them, but use any of the sales strategies that we've talked about over the years about how to get into the door, whatever sales strategy that works best for you. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, we don't, I, I get a lot of traffic or I don't get a lot of traffic, but how do I increase traffic to my site? A lot of people turn to SEO. SEO could be a good strategy, but probably not the best strategy, not the type of strategy that I would focus on if I were you. What you want to do is you want to create a cadence. Uh, we know that in sales, it's all about timing. We spend a lot of time with inside of Insable trying to identify trigger events. But ultimately, it's also important to make sure that you're staying in front of customer on a regular basis. Now, you can email your customer every day, but it doesn't mean that they're actually going to read the email. So you need to actually execute a strategy that provides value to your clients. And so there's about six different strategies that we've seen here that work really well in Sable that enable you to stay in contact with your prospects. One is surveys. Now, you're probably thinking, well, surveys are probably the last thing your customers want to receive. Well, if you craft them correctly, you'll be able to create surveys that add value. And ultimately, what you're trying to do is answer questions that they all have, but they don't have the answer to. So think about something that you could do. We've done a whole training on that, so I won't go into too, too in-depth into that, but surveys are a great way to stay in touch with, with uh, prospects, contacts, and rankings. So we talked about this, where we can basically gauge the wait times and the call quality on different contact centers and see how they rank against their competitors and provide them with a regular update about how they're performing. Petitions, newsletters, volunteerism, and experiments. Uh, one strategy that we've seen work really well lately with experiments is companies, rather than um, if you're familiar with the strategy, basically you're asking companies to test an ROI model based off of technology because ultimately all of the technology and services that you're selling should produce an ROI theoretically, right? And so um, what you're trying to do is set up experiments and say, let's try this for a few months and see what type of ROI we get. And so rather than just emailing companies one-on-one, one -on -one, what, what's what a strategy that we've seen work really well lately is they actually email two competitors on the same email and ask them if either of them would be interested in running the strategy and found that there's a much better response rate because of that. Also, uh, if in addition to working with website visitors and tracking them. It's also really helpful to add chat. Now, you may or may not have chat, but imagine somebody walking into your business lobby and just staring at your portfolio of services and then nobody walks over to them. That's essentially what you're doing if you don't have a chat service built into your site. Now, when it comes to chat services, you always want to be very aggressive. It's okay if you're pinging them on every page that they go to because chances are you're going to lose that customer anyways. Only 2% of those customers are actually going to reach out to you. So you want to take advantage of that as much as possible and try to be aggressive in how you work with these clients and how you, how you reach out to them. And so Pure Chat is a free chat service you can add to your site. It integrates with your phone. They do have a paid upgrade. But I found that it's been really powerful for our business to stay in touch, to work with people, and to engage prospects. You don't have to put it on every page. For instance, you can put it just on the pricing page and try to engage with them, try to contact them. But definitely a good addition to add to your site and try to take advantage of those. 
So you can see an example of how that looks there. So that's everything for today. Um, just to recap, again, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit out there. At the top of the list is definitely the people that are on your site trying to understand your business, doing their research. The chances are they're going to come and go unless you actually proactively go out and do something. So when it comes to priorities in terms of sales activities, reaching out to people that are on your site based off of their IP address using the Ansible tracking tool or using some type of chat tool to engage with them and try to proactively start a conversation is definitely worth your time and should make the sales process a lot easier for you. Next time we meet in two weeks, we'll be talking about using awards. That's another strategy to, to not only create a cadence, but to get responses. So again, thanks to everyone for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you on our next call. And if you have any questions or if you need a, co a copy of the slides or presentation, feel free to reach out to any of us, and we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Take care.